Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about checkboxes and radio buttons, which are used to give the user several options to choose between. And I want to make a little burger order app. So it says what belongs on your burger and you can choose what kind of ingredients you want to have on your burger. So let's say I want a burger with chicken, then I want cheese and salad, but no onions. And then I click on order and it will sum up what I ordered here. And a checkbox is in this case, this cheese, onion or salad option, because checkboxes can be checked or cannot be checked. So we can choose if we want to have onions on our burger or not. We can choose if we want to have cheese on our burger or not. And a radio button is like we have with the meat up here. So we have to choose one kind of meat, but our choice, um, which kind of meat we will choose here. So we can choose between beef, chicken and pork, but there is no option to uncheck that radio button. And I will show you how we can exactly make such an app here. So let's start by creating the layout. First, I want to insert a text view here that tells us what belongs on our burger. So text view layout width is wrap content and height is also wrap content. I'll give it an ID with TV question, for example. And I'll set, set the text to what or what do you want on your burger. And the text size I will set to 26 SP. And then we can close that tag off. We will set the constraints when we inserted all the views here in XML. Um, so next we need to create those three radio buttons here. And whenever we work with radio buttons, we need to put the radio buttons in a radio group. Because only one option is checkable, we need to define which radio buttons belong together. So imagine we wanted to have several radio groups. For example, if we would want to choose between different kinds of cheese too, then we would like to have one meat radio button checked and one cheese radio button checked. So we somehow need to separate those two groups that we can check two radio buttons in total, one for the meat and one for the cheese. And to do that, we need such a radio group here. So as you can see, there is a radio button and a radio group. First, we want to insert that radio group. I'll set the width and the height to wrap content. And I'll give it an ID, which says RG meat for radio group meat. And then we can close that tag off, but so that we can insert other views inside of that radio group. So don't close it off by that. Instead, close it off like this. So then we can insert other views inside of, the, of that radio group here. And here we want to insert our radio buttons now. So we open a new tag, radio button. And this radio button has rep content, rep content too. And I'll give it an ID of radio button RB, um, the first one is beef. And we have to change the text of that to beef. And here we can close that tag off, not like that, but like that, because we don't want to insert other views into that radio button. Then we can simply copy that radio button and paste it two times below. I'll name this one RB chicken and change this text to chicken too. And this one is finally RB pork and change this text to pork too. And if we now take a look in that design tab here, then there's our radio group meet and our TV question. Let's take that group and drag it a little bit down there. And then you can see that currently our radio buttons are below each other. So they are aligned vertically. But in my example here, I aligned them horizontally. And this is actually the same as it is for a linear layout where we can choose the orientation of that layout. The same we can go to the text tab again, go into our radio group and add the attribute um, orientation. And we can set it to horizontal here. And if we now take a look in that design tab, then you can see the orientation change to horizontal. 
Next, let's add those three checkboxes for the cheese, the onions and the salad. So let's open a tag here and create a checkbox. For those, we don't need a group because they can either be checked or unchecked. So the width is wrap content and the height too. I'll give it an ID of CB cheese. And the text, of course, says cheese too. And that's it. Then we can copy that che uh, checkbox again. Oops. And paste it two times below. One for C CB um, onions and one for CB salad. And of course, change the text of those checkboxes too to onions and sell it. Then we need to add this order button and finally this text view that displays our result what we basically ordered. So let's add a button here. Wrap content, wrap content. And the ID of that button is button order. And the text says order. And close that tag. And finally add that text view, which I will also set to wrap content, wrap content. The ID will be TV order. And actually, we don't want to have text at that text view, but I will add some text for now so we can constrain that text view in our layout editor. So just enter some text like test here, close that tag off. And now you can see all those red lines below our views. This is just because we haven't constrained them yet and we use them in a constraint layout. So Android Studio wants us to constrain them. Otherwise, they it doesn't know where to put them on the screen. So let's go back in that design tab and constrain all those views. You can see that they are all on top of each other here. We can just drag them around for us. This is not the position where they will be on the screen but this helps us to constrain them like this. So let's start with that. What do you want on your burger text view? I will constrain it horizontally in parent and I will constrain the top to the parent top. Then the next thing that comes below that text view is our radio group here. So make sure you don't click in that because then you select one of those radio buttons which is inside of that radio group, but we want to constrain that radio group meet here. So click on that RG meet and then you can constrain it. You can constrain the top to the text views bottom and the left to the parent left. Next comes our um, cheese checkbox here. So click on that, constrain it to the radio group bottom and the left to the parent left. Then constrain the onions checkbox to the cheese bottom and the parent left, the salad checkbox to the onions bottom and the parent left, then the button bottom to uh, the button top to the salad bottom and the left to the parent left. And finally, our text view here for that result, I will constrain to the bottom bottom and to the parent left. And actually, I just saw that this text is a little bit small. Let's change that text of our TV order here, the text size to 26 SP. And now we can actually remove that text attribute because we want to set that programmatically. So if you remove it, then our text view is basically invisible, but it is still there and we can access it from within our Kotlin file. Also, what I just noticed is that Currently, none of our radio buttons is checked, but we always want to check one. So we have to set the checked state initially to true for one of those buttons. So I will set it to, I will check that beef as default. Let's go to the text tab here, scroll up to our RB beef here, and add the attribute checked is equal to true. So by doing this, we make sure that there's always one option checked. Then we can go into our main activity.kt file 
in that on create function and set an on click listener to our button order because whenever we click on order we want to display the result so we want to display what we currently selected and ordered so we have button order dot set on click listener and now we can put the logic into those curly brackets and first we want to get the currently checked radio button from that radio group so what kind of meet the user checked here and we could do that by writing several if statements that just check whether that beef option is checked or that chicken option is checked or finally the pork option is checked but that's a lot of code and there's actually an easier option to um, solve this problem and this is by getting the currently checked ID from the radio group so there is an option let's save that in a variable checked meet radio button ID and now we have an option in our RG meet our radio group that says checked radio button ID so that will return the ID of the radio button that is currently checked and I showed you in a previous video how we can actually get the view when we have the ID of a view and we can do that with the find view by ID function so we can write well meet is equal to find view by ID and you can see it takes the ID as a parameter and first we need to specify what kind of view it is in this case it's a radio button and in the parentheses we now put that checked meet radio button ID so after that we save that currently checked radio button inside of that meet variable for the checkboxes this is a little bit easier because we can they can either be checked or not checked so let's write well cheese is equal to um, CB cheese dot is checked so by calling the the checkbox and the is checked variable we can get the current state of that checkbox so if it is checked or not then we can do the same for the onions is equal to CB onions dot is checked and finally well salad is equal to CB salad dot is checked and now we can actually create our string that we want to set to our result text view let's write val order string is equal to and first we want to insert you ordered a burger with then add a backslash n here which just says that we want to have a line break after that so it's the same as you would just press enter in a text view then after that I'll make a line break here too so it is a little bit more clear what I write here we want to insert whatever the text of our checked radio button meet is so if you take a look here if we check that chicken radio button for example then the meet variable holds the current instance of our radio button chicken and if we get the text of that radio button which is chicken then we have exactly the text that we want to insert here in our order string so let's click into those curly brackets here and write meet.text then we can check if cheese so if cheese is checked then we want to insert that cheese string with a line break before that so it is inserted in a new line so backslash n cheese and if cheese is not um, checked so in the else case we just want to um, insert an empty string basically we just want to skip that case then make a plus after that again and check if onions is checked if it is then backslash n onions so make a line break and write onions and if it is not checked then we don't want to insert anything and finally do the same for the salad so if salad is checked then we want to insert a backslash n so a line break and salad and else nothing and finally we want to set that order string 
into our TV order. So TV order dot text is equal to order string. And now we can run our app. So as you can see, our app looks exactly like I showed you before. Now we can check, for example, pork. We want to have onions and salad. Then we click on order and it tells us you ordered a burger with pork, onions and salad, but not with cheese. If we uncheck all the options, for example, then it will only tell us that we ordered a burger with pork or with beef, for example, and so on. So just try around with this a little bit. It's a really cool feature that you can have those radio buttons and checkboxes. And yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.